this will be part three of three part video series working through a uh, lecture on Kapinski's healthcare finance chapter eight. And again, this should apply to at least the fifth and sixth editions, if not some of the earlier editions as well. So continuing with our discussion of variants. So we went through and developed the actual. And so we now have a, a static budget, which refers to the expectations that we had at the beginning of the year or before the beginning of the year. Then we have our kind of post uh, data. You know, now that we've actually had the year go through, we have the information about how things actually went. And so we're gonna build a, a, a flex budget that kind of integrates uh, the two of those pieces of data, the two data sets to help us make uh, comparisons between the different, uh, uh, between the two different uh, uh, budgets or to analyze the difference between our expectations and what actually happened. So in the next slide, we're going to have, uh, we're going to show, I'll show you the static flex and actual. So um, you might have to have multiple flex budgets. And in some of the problems, we actually do that. Uh, but for, for our purposes, we'll just have the one flexible budget. And so let's look at what this what this really looks like for Carroll Clinic. Okay, so the data in the first column called with the title static is the data that is, is based on our assumptions at the beginning of the year, right? So we thought we'd have 36,000 fee-for-service visits. We thought we'd have 54,000 capitated visits. And so all this is driven off of those expectations. Our actual column is what actually happened. So they actually had 40,000 fee-for-service visits. They actually had 72,000 capitated visits and for a total of 112,000 visits and, and then corresponding revenues and expenses associated with each of those. The flex budget is a blending of the two. And so what I did here at the top of the page is I, I, showed, I, I show you how these are calculated. So we have in the static, everything in the static column is based on our expected price times our expected volume. In the actual column, everything is our actual price that we paid or received times our actual volume that we did or, or purchased, right? And then the flex blends the two together. And, and this is gonna, this is kind of a, like a, is a very unintuitive kind of wacky idea until you get used to it. But, the flex budget takes the expected price and multiplies it by the actual volume. And so basically what it tells us is based on our expected, you know, our expected price, either revenue per unit or cost per unit, given your volume, this is what your budget should have been. So if our price expectations were right, taking our price expectations times our actual volume, this is what your budget should have been based on, uh, based on what you actually did. Now that's assuming that your price estimates are good, right? But it does allow us to then kind of um, isolate the effects of changes in price and changes in, in volume because we can compare the results of the static and the flex. And because we're holding price constant, we can isolate the effects of changes in volume, right? So our fee for service, for example, revenue. We thought we'd get $25 per visit. We thought we'd have 36,000 visits. So we thought we'd have revenue of 900,000. We actually had 900, got 960,000. How is that explained? Like, how is that $60,000 increase explained? Particularly when we know that we wound up with a lower per um, price per visit. So comparing the static and the flex, what this is saying is given the expected price of $25 per visit and the actual volume that we had, we, th we should have earned a million dollars. So we have a variance here of a million dollars, um, excuse me, of a hundred thousand dollars, 
900, uh, a million minus 900 gives us 100,000. So if our price expectations were accurate, we should have made a million dollars. We didn't actually make a million dollars. We only made $960,000. So the part of the, the increase, right, um, uh, the volume variance, as we're going to refer to it, is a positive 100,000. But the um, price variance was a negative 40,000 because we, um, we were given our comparing our actual to actual volume, we actually earned 40,000 less than we expected to because our, the price we were able to get was a dollar per visit less. It was 24 rather than 25. So that's how we use these columns. We'll do a couple more examples. But the important thing, the thing I try to convince my students to remember, you know, you could try to remember all these, these definitions, but I think the thing to try to remember is, you know, just this, this simple um, uh, pro progression across the top. Static is expected times expected. Actual is actual times actual. Flexible is expected times actual. And it's a blended, it's a blended column, right? So let's, let's look at, uh, let's start talking about kind of how the variance analysis is done. So, um, so the thing is, right, uh, for your flexible budget, right, we thought uh, we'd have a, a 40,000 uh, fee-for-service visits and uh, excuse me, we, we actually had 40,000 fee-for-service visits and, and 72,000 capitated visits. We um, thought we would have $25 per visit for our fee-for-service. Um, and so in that flexible budget, um, uh, we have a different number here, right, that uh, reflects our initial assumptions um, about price and cost per unit. Uh, but have are allowed to vary based on our actual outcomes. Okay, so um, looking at uh, uh, variance, we kind of we start at the at the top level, if you will, or the bottom line, actually, in, in a sense, with profit profit variance. So profit variance is um, the difference between. Uh, what we actually earned and what we thought we would earn in terms of profit. So to get that, uh, we have to go back to our our profit line, right? And we thought we were going to earn one hundred and thirty thousand, a positive one hundred thirty thousand dollar profit. We actually had a negative two hundred fifty two thousand dollar profit. So to get our profit variance, let me switch my view here. Um, So to get our profit variance, it's equal to the actual profit minus the static profit. So this is the profit we actually got. This is the profit we thought we would get. So our actual profit was negative 252,000. Our static profit or our expected profit was a positive 130,000. And so our, the effect is uh, that we wind up with um, a negative 382,000, right? Because um, uh, we thought we'd have, so the, the gap here between the two is 382,000. Now, our profit variance can be broken out into two other variances, the revenue variance and the cost variance, right? So um, profit, right, is made up of, profit is simply revenue minus expenses or costs, right? Uh, cost, right? I guess we should, I should say cost because that's what we're using uh, here. Um, and so, each of these could be we had a projection for and and they weren't correct right so um 
we can then go back to our chart and say, okay, what was our expected? So revenue variance is equal to actual revenue minus static revenue. So our actual revenue was 2.04 million and our static revenue was 1.98 million. And so the difference there is 40,000, right? No, 60,000, excuse me. Um, so we actually earned more revenue than we thought we would. But, um, and so how does that explain our negative 382 uh, profit variance? Well, we haven't quite got there yet. So if we earned more revenue than we thought we would, then our expenses or costs have to uh, explain the, the di difference. So our cost variance is equal to our um, static costs minus our actual revenue. Now, notice, you'll notice something I'm doing different, right? Profit variance and actual, uh, and excuse me, and revenue variance, I took the actual minus the static. Now I'm taking the static minus the actual, and that's not a mistake. Um, uh, I'm doing that on purpose. And the reason is we're trying to have the signs of the values come out in a way that reflects positive being good and negative being bad. So if we have actual profit greater than static profit, or if we have the actual profit we earn is greater than the profit that we expected to earn, then that's a good thing, right? Um, you know, we, we, if we're gonna be surprised, we'd rather be surprised with more profit than less profit. So when we have more profit than we thought, we have a positive number. When we have more revenue than we thought, then we have a positive number with expenses or costs we take we subtract the actual from the static because if we thought we'd spend say in this case um a total of 1.85 million and we actually spent um two point uh 292 million, we have an unpleasant surprise, right? So our, uh, the delta here is 442,000 negative, right? Because we have 1.85 minus 2.292, uh, two, that gives us 442,000 negative. We want it to be negative because this is a bad thing, right? So the negative sign means, right, means it's bad. Um, and it is bad because we thought we'd only spend 1.8. We actually spent almost 2.3. Um, uh, so the negative sign tells us, okay, this is a bad variance, bad for the organization. Uh, and so, the, so what we do, so we're taking, we kind of, we flip the arrangement for cost related variances so that, um, if we overspend, we wind up with a negative number. Okay. So that's how we actually uh, uh, develop these variances. Let me get back to the slides. Okay. So, so here we, as, as I said, we had a, a profit variance of negative 382. That's our actual profit minus our static profit. We had a revenue variance of 60,000. That's our actual revenue minus our, uh, our static revenue. But we had a, so we had a positive 60,000 revenue variance means we got more revenue than we thought we would, but we have, but that positive revenue variance is swamped by the very high cost variance, which is our static cost minus our actual cost. So even though we had 60,000 more revenue than we thought, we had 442,000 more um, cost than we thought. When you add the two together, they add back up to the profit variance. So that's one way you can always check to see if you've done this correctly, 
is the subordinate variances, in this case, revenue and cost, added together should always add back up to the, to the higher level variance, which in this case is the profit variance. So we're able to now, so what this is allowing us to do is to start to kind of drill down into what actually happened in the organization, right? So given those three columns, well, at this point, we're only using the static and the actual. We'll use the, um, we'll use the, the flex here in just a moment. But, um, but we can now start to see, okay, revenue wasn't necessarily the problem. The problem really was cost. So uh, looking down here, right, the profit fell uh, 382,000 short of expectations. Um, so this is much worse than indicated, you know, um, actually by a, a $250,000, $252,000 loss. So one way to look at it would be, well, we had a $252,000 loss. Well, yes, but it was a $252,000 loss when we thought we'd have 130000 in profit. So that's actually the variance, not just simply zero minus 252, right? A negative 252. It's actually worse than that. It's actually, we were off by 382,000. Um, so the profit shortfall is, you know, as I was just saying, primarily driven by the fact that our cost overrun was, was so significant. Um, it was only slightly offset by uh, the additional revenues that we brought in as a result of doing more uh, patient care for our fee-for-service patients. Now, rev so each of these rev variances can be further broken down into subordinate variances. So we can have, we can take revenue variance and break it into volume variance and price variance, which is what we, I was starting to talk about before, right? So revenue variance, uh, is our actual revenue minus our static revenue. Volume variance is our flex revenue minus our static revenue. Because remember, right, we have, um, let me switch my, so volume, so volume variance is equal to uh, flex revenue minus static revenue where the flex revenue is the uh, price expected times the volume actual and the static revenue is the price expected times the volume expected. So what's the diff, what, what, are, what are we holding constant and what are we changing? Well, we're holding the price assumption constant, right? And we're varying the volume. So the variance that's captured here then, the difference between these two is strictly limited to the effects of the change in volume. Remember, we went from um, uh, uh, 36,000 visits to uh, uh, 40,000 visits. So this is $25 times 40,000 visits minus $25 times 36,000 visits. And so we have um, what? Uh, let me just get my numbers. It was, um, uh, this gives us 2.08 million. And this, our expectation for revenue was 1.98 million. Sorry, that would, that would be including our capitated as well. So that should be um, uh, 1 million in fee for service revenue uh, minus uh, uh, 900,000 in um, uh, uh, and this is strictly our fee for service portion uh, 900,000 uh, in, in expected fee for service. Now I could um, and I, I guess I probably should do it with our total uh, revenue Right, so total revenue is actually um, 2080, right, expected. It just doesn't correspond with what I was saying here. Minus um, 1980 million. So in both cases, we wind up with 
$100,000 in variance. And that's not always going to be true. That just happens to be true because there was no change to our capitated revenue. All right, so I'm probably muddying this up more, more than helping at this point. Um, sorry about that. But um, so this is just our fee for service. This is our total um, volume variance. But bear in mind, the difference here is between the 1 million earned flex revenue and the 900,000 uh, 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 static revenue is the result of a change in volume. And that volume is only relevant uh, in this case, uh, in this particular case, it's only relevant uh, to the change in, in uh, fee-for-service volume because we didn't have a change in the number of capitated uh, uh, lives. If we had a change in the number of capitated lives, then that would also be incorporated in here. But in this case, we didn't have a change in the number of capitated lives. So, we have $100,000 in volume variance, and that's a result of chain comparing our uh, flex revenue and our static revenue. Now our price, price variance, right? We have a negative 40,000. So price variance is equal to our um, actual rev minus our flex rev, right? Um, so our actual revenue was in total, so I'll, 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 I'll do it in total, including our capitated revenue was 2.04 million and our flexible revenue was 2.08 million, which gives us a 40,000, negative $40,000 um, uh, price variance. And that comes about because for our, um, uh, for our fee-for-service patients in this case, because there was no change in the capitated, our fee-for-service patients, we had a um, actual price of 24 times our volume actual of 40,000, right? That is where the, where the 40,000 is going to come from, uh, minus our uh, expected price times our actual volume, sorry, actual volume. Uh, so that's 25 times 40,000, right? And so that difference there is, is $1 per visit. So one times 40 is gonna give you that negative 40. And bearing in mind, this is true only because there was no change in our capitated uh, patients, either in terms of the number of patients we had capitated or the PM, PM. Now, if either of those had changed, we'd have some price variance from those as well. Okay. So, back to our slides. So, that explains, uh, sorry, where am I? So, that explains our price variance. And then um, you can go even further down into uh, breaking you know, uh, breaking these down and you could look at enrollment and utilization. Uh, I'm not going to do that here, but you can do it. Uh, some of the problems, we, we will do that. And so it's just kind of, it continues down a hierarchy of more and more detail. Um, cost variance works the same way, right? So we had a uh, cost variance of negative 442,000. Um, and that breaks out into a volume variance of negative 330,000, right? That comes from comparing the static costs that we had. So we expected to spend, you know, we expected to spend, here we are, uh, we expected to spend uh, 1.35 plus the 500, so 1.85. Um, we actually spent, what is that, uh, 1.792 plus 500. Uh, which would be uh, 2.292, right? So um, 
So our total cost variance was negative 442. And then what this, we, we break it out into volume and, and managerial variance or management variance. Management variance is just another word for price variance. And the reason we call it management variance is we hold our managers responsible for, uh, uh, for managing the cost per unit. A lot of managers, you know, managers in hospitals, there's a, they can't do all that much about how many patients actually come through their doors, uh, but they actually, but we do expect our managers to work really hard to control the amount of labor they're using, to control the amount of supplies they're using, and so forth. So we hold them. Uh, my experience in, in working with hospitals is they tend to focus on the management variance more than on the val var volume variance when they're talking to their managers. Obviously, at the kind of uh, because they recognize that their managers don't have that much control over volume variance. Okay, so you know, looking at um, the cost variance on the cost side, you know, three hundred thirty thousand was due to higher volume, right? And that was both higher volume for their fee-for-service patients as well as for their uh, capitated patients. Fee-for-service, more fee-for-service patients bring in more revenue. Capitated, more capitated patients don't bring in any more revenue. Um, so the assumption here is that the managers can't affect that, right? Can't really affect volume, but that just that's what happened. However, um, they spent more per unit, right, per visit on patients than was expected. So the portion that we would hold our managers responsible for would be the 112,000 112, of the $442,000 overrun. So when you look at the managers, you're not going to hold them responsible for the fact that we saw more patients. That's not, you know, the department manager's fault. But the department manager should have done a better job controlling the amount of labor and the amount of supplies that they use per unit. You can break management variance again down further, right? Because you could say, okay, uh, and, and we'll do this in some of the problems. But we'll be able to say, well, $112,000 overall variance. We spent 64000 more in labor than we thought and 47,000 more in supplies that we thought. So that gives us, uh, you know, a better accountability of where the, and we're able to, you know, through this process, able to drill down into uh, management's behavior uh, and say, you know, well, where was your shortfall? Okay. Um, so kind of in summary, uh, you know, we're looking, we start at the top, of the uh, of the organization of the of the organization in this case this clinic, we look at their profit and their profit variance. The profit variance breaks out into revenue and cost variance, and then the revenue and cost variance can break down into subordinate variances. Of on the revenue side, you have price and volume variance. On the cost side, you have also have price variance. It's called management variance and volume variance, and then those can be further decomposed down. And so it depends on kind of how far down into the weeds you want to go. Um, but it's a useful tool for understanding what actually happened in your organization and using those, and that is, uh, and the purpose of a budget, you know, in terms of, uh, uh, of controlling how the organization is actually working and whether our managers are delivering what we ask them to deliver. Um, these tools, this variance analysis tool, can help us kind of drill down and see what actually uh, was done. So is it all worth it? Again, it comes back to that juice is, is the juice worth the squeeze, right? How far down are you going to drill? How, uh, and it depends. How, can you hold your managers responsible? If you can't, then, you know, you're just kind of doing this exercise, um, you know, without, without any real value. So that concludes uh, the lecture on chapter eight. Um, and uh, you know, please let me know if you have any questions.